You all might have seen a similar scenario in your own workplaces. This happened to us around five years ago. We were one year away from the production of a program, and then there were still around 4,000 unresolved tickets in our system. There was a lot of yelling going around everywhere. At that time, we were using waterfall project methodology, and we had a series of quality gates with deliverables passing through these mechanisms with very little feedback loop. Our system testing approach was quite sketchy, and the changing specification always threw us under the bus. The first thing we did was to change to agile methodology. We started the daily stand-up meetings. We improved the gap in our system testing. And finally, we were successfully able to deliver the project on time. To avoid a similar scenario, we went to ASPICE. Two years down the lane, we completed a very complicated project while achieving ASPICE level two cert certification. But when we look back at our numbers, we realized, this, we realized that our man hours had skyrocketed. We were hemorrhaging money. We did a study of our tool chain, reviewed our process definitions and artifacts, and realized that each engineer was losing around 150 hours per year, just because of the inefficiencies in the system and the tool and the processes. We changed our tools, we updated our processes, and then embarked on a journey of DevOps. And while we have achieved some success in, in, success in this area, we realized that we are essentially a very small piece in this big puzzle. And that same mistakes are being repeated everywhere, probably in the places that you guys are working right now. Hi, my name is Akhtar Abbas, and I am a software manager at Nippon Seki International. And I want to share some of those lessons and ideas from that journey. A lot of ideas presented here are not mine, but are being used across various platforms and various industries. And in the next 15 minutes or so, what I will try to do is to go through a silhouette of a mechanism that can connect these ideas together. I think it will help us all, OEMs, various tiers, tool providers, process creators, and most importantly, the software developers and the software testers to do a better job at product design, development and testing instead of wasting resources on tracking action items. Now we all can agree that this is a very interesting time to work in automotive industry. In many ways, this industry resembles the IT industry of late 1990s and early 2000s. It's increasing becoming software centric and test centric. Over there flashing, and changing market dynamics have driven the demand to reduce the delivery timeline. The hardware costs are going down and the autonomous driving prospects require greater emphasis on reliability and conformance to standards. Most importantly, this is a great time for us to fundamentally transform the way users use automotive platforms and in turn change the society into a new form of mobility never seen before. First of all, let's, like, let's look at what's wrong with the way we are doing things. Now we know that waterfall asks for the detailed planning at the beginning of the project down to the work breakdown level. It is very documentation centric, has a very fixed delivery timeline, even at the beginning, including the handover of artifacts across all tiers. And somehow our auditors love it because they can see everything in a document. The result is a very lengthy cycle where the customer needed features travel across OEMs as CCB request, go down to tier one as, uh, and tier as specifications, proceeds to tier two as SRW, comes back to tier one as code, back to the OEM as test results and software, and released to the customer after validation at the plan or the services centers. It takes us a few years to deliver a product and a few months to deliver fixes to the end user. Agile, on the other hand, is flexible, iterative, 
rolling web planning. And the manifesto of, of Agile is less documentation and more demonstration, which poses a challenge. Like, how do we know if we have done enough upfront planning to know what we need to deliver to the customer? Do we have enough documentation to cover the regulatory requirements? Are we sure we got enough people to complete the project and how can we manage the risks if we do not think about them ahead of time? Let's look at our testing strategies. Still a large portion of our testing is manual where somebody manually puts the inputs and checks the outputs against some written test cases. So once the project is over, the effort is going down the drain. Testing happens after the release. So someone has to package the software, someone has to flash it, and someone has to test it. That's a lengthy cycle. The test cases and test setups are project specific, so they cannot be used for other projects with low reusability. The focus is always on getting that testing process right. So the tester has to check if he has done the right inputs, interpreted the right outputs, he has using uh, used the right canoe panels, the right hardware, and the right software. Thus, the test case design is the least attention part of this activity. The feedback loop is slow because the defects are created here by the software developer. They get released, released here. They get tested by somebody. They get root caused by somebody. Then they get rescheduled to the CCB. And then they finally come back to developer anywhere from two months, two weeks to few months. Finally, there is always a question of, did we use the right software variant with the hardware variant? Let's look at our testing setups. Now we all have different kinds of boxes, but who orders and who maintains these boxes? And a part of this comes from the loose definition and the responsibility matrices, first of all, between system and software specifications. But most importantly, it's across various tier ones and tier two because we don't talk about this with each other. There is so much of duplication and proliferation of setups when we can all use a combined strategy to distribute the scopes and have a better utilization of test setups across OEMs, tier one and tier two. One of the areas we get things quite often quite wrong is in relation to the tools. We like to say that the tools are independent of process and are quite interchangeable. The tools are considered the most significant cost item and the least contributing factor. So every time there is a budget cut, the tool quantity is the first thing to get affected. The team members remain the same. So there is always some team members waiting for tools to be available. Remember the 150 hours per developer wastage? Try converting that into the dollar amount next time and then compare the tool price that you're talking about. The net result is that we have a lengthy software delivery timeline. We have a nightmare for the product team because of the difficult change management. We have over testing in some areas because those areas are easy and the tools are cheap and familiar. And we have gaps in the critical areas that don't, don't get, do not get tested quite often because there are always expensive tools involved or it's hard to find right people to use those. So the question is, who pays the cost? The end user. The tier two passes their end efficiency to tier one. The tier one has it to OEM and the OEM to end user. So we have products they are, that are too expensive to make and too expensive to buy. We are paying more for our cars because we cannot do a better job at doing things. Let's go through some ideas that might nudge us in the right direction. First of all, let's see how DevOps provides a solution to the system testing problems. In DevOps, instead of manual testing, we create automated test cases so that they can be run hundreds and thousands of times before a process is released without any additional effort. We use our infrastructure as code to automate releases across various tiers. We 
focus on test tools that allow us to design based upon platform testing so they can be used across multiple projects using configuration changes and some basic fundamental changes. We use tools that allow us to review design of the test cases, either using graphical interfaces or configurable workflows. So the focus is on the design of the test cases. We do continuous integration and delivery so developer can know that he has broken something next time he checks in the code. And we keep the test cases code on the same tool so we don't have to worry about the wrong package being used against the wrong test cases. In order to uh, bridge our testing gap, we need to diversify our testing context involving different combinations of hardware, software model, and even end user cars in roof so we can test the software from all different angles. Ideally, we should have progressively complex setups across tiers. Uh, so there is a scalability advantage at the OEM with more complex setups and cost saving advantage at tier two for simpler setups. Most importantly, we will share all these set test setups and test cases through internet and the magic of DevOps. This also allows us to cross pollinate the test cases. So some of the tier one test cases might run in the system context and some of the system can, uh, test cases might influence the tier one testing. Essentially, this is what it will look like. The OEMs will have their complicated system here, vehicles from the testing and even user data from the field users. Tier ones might have subsystem hills or simulations to run and tier two might have simpler test environments. But the important fact is all of these will be connected through the DevOps CI CD pipeline. Essentially, what this will allow us is to do to shift the whole right hand side V to the left and avoid the problem of all release ba 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 based feedback and testing after release. Thus, after every sprint, when the tier two has completed the coding, we will have a release candidate that is ready, tested, vetted, and can be released to the end user through the magic of over there flashing. Now we would be needing very strong processes to make it all happen. Let's go ahead with the ASPICE as a starting point. For project management, change management, risk management, problem resolution management, product release, measurement and quality management areas of ASPICE, we need a scalable agile concept, which kind of combines the best of agile and waterfall methodologies. So the teams can plan ahead of time, at a high level, but can keep it iterative and flexible. We will have OEM teams, tier one teams, tier two teams, all working together. And the product owners across each layer will coordinate in a concurrent development model. So no one has to wait for the next one to finalize a spec, a code, or a test case. We will need an integrated ticketing strategy with the right access and privileges to see who's doing what and well. With all this integrated data visible across all these tiers, we need a dashboard, which will provide the intuitive feedback on where the roadblocks are. This dashboard might contain qualitative indicators of the solid software quality, critical failures, project delays, and dependencies. So OEM team will be able to see what is the roadblock at tier one or tier two right away? And tier two can see what went wrong in OEM test setup as if it is happening in their own lab. This will essentially allow us to create not only speedy software, but help everybody be the quality guardian, just like a Toyota TQM and on court. We will need to connect our CI pipeline, CD pipeline, the tier ones and OEMs, meaning our code repositories, our test cases, our branches and setup across various tiers have to be configured and connected. We will need a configuration management strategy for those CI items and see how they get baseline and how they get passed on. To stop everyone from freaking out, we will need a very strong set of rules for access and privileges across various tiers. 
And finally, we might need a tool audit and the standard for those tool audits. So it will not be very difficult or different from how it is already happening in IT industry. If you look at our industry from a strategy point of view, you will see that we have reached a Nash equilibrium where various tiers are occupying relatively comfortable niches in the test setup, test services, and product development areas. This proposal will change everything. And the ACQ4 will become a key to who wants to go where in the next business move. The questions like, who does the requirement analysis? Who does the integration testing? Who does the qualification testing? These will not be simple questions of cost saving, but very strategically important questions. Who will own the final IP and what they don't want to do with it will be the big question. And anyone taking lead in this strategy will be like a frontier man capturing the lands hitherto unexplored. Finally, we will have to look at the tools in terms of their place in the whole development life cycle instead of mere CapEx items on our budget. We'll have to know how easy to create test cases and that tool, how good the tool is in terms of connecting with other tools. Do they have floating licenses, global licenses, or fixed dongle licenses? How easy to maintain and upgrade these licenses? How much of these licenses can be used across multiple projects? We will have to judge the tools for the content of their character and not the cost of their ownership. Now I have shared many ideas in here and some of them might be crazy, but trust me, there is a seed of promise in this. And I want to make a proposal here to all of you. I think we all need to create a combined forum, not much different from how we have a IATF, a SPICE, or Autosar forum. And I think being the custodian of technology, OEMs need to have a ownership in it. And importantly, the tier one, tier two, tier three, development teams, chipset vendors, tool providers, and IT team need all to work together to solve many of the challenges of the software, hardware, flashing equipment, test equipment, and configuration equipment that is needed for this to happen. More importantly, we must allow ourselves to experiment and hit the impasses that we feel the need to cross. We must allow ourselves to fail repeatedly and successfully to know what works and what does not. I think we have a huge opportunity here. Through the scalable agile across all tiers, we will have faster delivery timeline. Through DevOps, we will have huge cost savings by sharing and reusing our test cases and test setups. Through the lean 360 degree testing, we will have better defect detection, better quality coverage, and better reliability of software. Through the selection of right tools uh, and by combining them together, we can all focus on better product design and less on the project management. With this, I come to the end of my presentation. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. I thank you very much.